Hi everyone, so you might have seen a reel on Instagram showing you the pages of this book and this is a project that I started ages and ages ago. I received two books full of embroidery stitches a couple of years ago and I thought it would be an interesting project to learn as many stitches as I could by letter and take a letter at a time and create a sampler page full of all of the stitches that start with that letter and I've been basically just putting pages together here and there and posting the stitches as little tutorial reels on Instagram so if I just take you through the book first of all this was the first one I started with and I actually started using these little letter beads and then realised that I could put a, a felt letter on that would stand out a bit better and so this one didn't have it originally so I've, I've put one on recently but basically I learnt several stitches there's a Armenian edge stitch here and this is the Algerian eye and we've got arrowhead stitch. I just used them in different ways and played around with them, used them to put buttons on and just played with the stitches really. And I took this fabric here as my inspiration for the colour scheme. And that started a little bit of a trend. And then this one was inspired by this fabric. And so that's where I pulled the colour scheme together. Then it started getting a little bit of traction on Instagram and so I started polling my followers to decide on what I should do next and so I first of all did a couple of polls about what colour should I choose and gave people a range of colours to choose from and so we ended up with purple for C and so there's all sorts here so we've got cast on stitch, we've got couching, and because it was C, I did circles as well. Uh, we've got chevron stitch, we've got this coral stitch somewhere, I can't see it. Oh here, here's coral stitch, and this is cretin stitch down here. So that was that. Then we did letter D, and again my followers chose orange that time. So we've got lots of detached stitches here, detached wheat tear stitch, we've got double chain, daisy stitch, we've got Danish knots, which was a new discovery to me. They're really cute, they look like little love hearts on a string. So there's all sorts there. Then we did E, and my followers chose pink, and if you follow me on Instagram you all know that I'm not a massive fan of pink so this was quite a challenge but there were lots of interesting stitches here my favorite one was this one which was an eyelet flower so you make an eyelet I've got some eyelets over here and you use a sort of satin stitch layered up to create the petals and eastern stitch was a bit popular and this is ermine stitch and it this one up until very recently was the best performing reel I've ever done. I don't know what it was about this stitch, but it really got everybody going. Then we did F and this time for the, for the next few, I gave a selection of fabric. So people chose this fish fabric here. And this is my favorite page I think so far. I absolutely love it. Probably because it's all my favorite stitches. So yeah, that was the fabric, that sort of mustard and gray that inspired the colour scheme. Then again, it was this fabric here that inspired the G page that my followers chose. And so we've got all sorts on there. I love these guanitos. I love how textural this little sort of bit is. And this is, people know it as turkey work, but it's actually called uh, Gildi's Knot. I think that's the right way to pronounce it. And I've tried it with lots of different threads and the whole point of these pages is that we can experiment and then my most recent page this one actually might now be my favorite again it was this fabric here that my followers chose and that inspired that one so i've just basically put it together as a book and i'm using the same technique that i'm using for my winging it book so i will do a tutorial about how i join the pages together that's coming up early june 
when I've got my next wing in it page. So what I'm going to show you today is basically how I set up my page for stitching on. My starting point always is a piece of natural linen. So all of these pages are backed by a piece of natural linen and I bought this a while ago. It's quite crinkly and so it gives quite a nice weathered aged texture straight away that I quite like but it is quite flimsy and so what I do to get this lovely sort of squishy padded feel is I've got some just off cuts of batting that I have left from making a quilt and so I've cut these up and they're both roughly and I say roughly I mean that's not even a square they're roughly eight inches square and I say roughly because we are going to trim it back to the right size so we only just need to start with something roughly that side and my starting point generally is to just pin those two together and you don't need to be too fussy about it because it will sort of spread out a bit now these pages are six inches by six inches so my next step is to draw on my six inch square and I've got this little quilting ruler that I got free with something it's not particularly good quality but it does the job and so I'm using my six inch lines to just make sure I've got a border all the way around and then I mark in my edges and I just want a guide just to make sure I don't stitch where I'm going to cut so what I don't want is to embroider too far and then trim it back and cut my stitches so that it all unravels so that's my square marked in now this time around my followers have chosen this fabric and I don't know whether the camera will pick it up but it's got some gold in there so it's got a bit of a shine to it which is very different for me I'm not very blingy either so that's very unlike me and I quite like how bold it is so I'm going to put it in the middle and I've got out of my stash I use quite really quite small pieces for this I've found some fabrics that coordinate with the colour scheme so I've got different patterns different textures and I've got a little bit of sari silk here and a bit of black ribbon so then I'm just going to play around and place them and I overlap them a little bit and just tinker about until I'm happy with an arrangement that I like. Now I did practice this a little bit yesterday so I've got a bit of an idea what I'm doing. Now I've got the edge of this piece of sequin fabric and I quite like the fact that the sequins create a sort of scalloped edge there. So I want that there and what I'm trying to do is leave a bit of the background showing and get some angles and different arrangements so that I've got a bit of visual interest on my piece. And this one's a self edge so you probably can't see it because it's black but it's a little bit fluffy so that's going to go somewhere. put it there and I've got another salvage here so if I took that black one in I don't want that to line up with that so I'm dropping it down slightly and then I've got a piece of purple which might look fun poking out as well and this bit of purple has got some gold on it too so let's get that quite near the edge And then let's get these strips in quite quite like that magenta running all the way down and I'm wondering whether I can get this bit in somewhere quite like the fact that that's got a bit of a gradient to it something like that maybe I'll make a tab there right I think that will work so a good idea if you are new to this is to just take a little photo 
to make sure that you don't forget how you've laid it out once you're happy with it. I'm not going to do that because I'm filming. So what I do next is just pin things into place. So I'm just going to pop some pins here and there just to keep everything where I've placed it. There we go, that's the layout so far. Now I've just got some machine cotton here. This happens to be a Silco thread if you're interested. It's dark petunia, but uh, I pick these up off eBay mostly. And so my next stage is to just tack things down. Now you'll notice I haven't tacked around the outside yet. And that's because as I tack these pieces, I'm gonna be smoothing out the fabric. So what I don't want is to tack this down and create a sort of bag in the middle that uh, sticks out. So I just want to work, when you're working with layers, it's often good to work from the center out. Now you could do this in a coordinating thread for each piece of fabric if you want to, or you could make your tacking stitches a feature. What I tend to do is just leave them because once I've overstitched, they tend to fade into nothing really. You don't notice them anymore. But if they are prominent and I don't want them to be, I can always take them out at the end. So I'm not following specifically the pieces of fabric. I am just stitching so that I'm catching down the fabric wherever I can. So this center piece is quite big so I'll probably start by stitching around the outside of that because I'm going to actually catch quite a lot of pieces along the way as I'm doing that. So you can see on the back there I've just gone around that rectangle and so what I can do now is take out any pins that are going to get in my way that are holding down that central piece that I've already stitched down. I'm looking for the biggest wins basically so anywhere that I can stitch where I want to catch quite a lot of things. If I stitch down this side here I don't just hold down the ribbon but I'm also holding these two pieces in place. So that's what I'm going to do next. While I'm here, I might as well just go around the edge of the black and purple and just make sure everything is secure. What I don't want is for things to move around while I'm embroidering. And I don't know if you can tell what I'm doing, but I'm as I'm stitching, I'm using my thumb and the fingers at the back to just smooth out the layers to make sure I'm not sewing puckers or bagginess into my panel. You could totally machine stitch this if you wanted to and then just embroider over the top but I think the time it takes me to get my machine out and thread it all up and I will have done this so I I do quite like the process of sewing by hand. I think it's just this piece of blue here and the purple sari silk. quite like the process of removing pins. It makes me feel like I'm making progress and it's quite nice to gradually see your patchwork re-emerge from under all the pins. So, that's my pieces. Now what I'm going to do next is just tack around the outside because I don't want to be working with all those pins. So I've just got some white machine cotton here and I'm just going to go well outside of the line because all of this will be cut off and I'm just going around tacking down those two layers so that I can just work with it without pins being in the way all the time and so that they don't move too much as I'm embroidering. 
Oh, I'm going to make a little tab with this extra piece of silk. I've made tabs on a couple of pages. Uh, there's one, there's one there, and there's one there. I'll make one with this little bit of excess. So I've just tacked it down for the time being because otherwise, as I'm embroidering, the thread will keep looping around it if I leave it loose and getting on my nerves like that. <laughs> so if you are going to have a go at making these sample pages, you can find all of the stitch tutorials that I've done so far starting back at A on my Instagram grid in the highlights. So if you look at the top of my profile page, you'll see lots of little circles with letters in them and you might see one that says winging it first that's our embroidery project that's running every week so that's learning embroidery step by step we learn some stitches each month and then have a colour theme for the month and we use prompts that I release every Friday to inspire a piece of embroidery that tends to feature our stitches of the month and just plays with fabric and thread and beads and things like that so we're having a lovely time doing that <laughs> it's it's proving to be great fun and there's a live stream on Sunday we do a live stream on the fourth Sunday every month and this month there's a fifth Sunday and our fifth Sundays are all about textile techniques and there's an absolute doozy coming up it's such a great project it's a really bumper one so it's going to be quite a long video but I've had so much fun putting it together and making the piece I really recommend that you tune in for that and I don't normally ask but if you want to get notified when that uploads make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so that you get a little notice if you want to see that textile art project now there's one more thing that i do and i got some of these little wooden letter templates really inexpensively off amazon i'll see if i can find them and if i can i'll put a link below and i use those to cut a letter out of felt so you'll notice that there's a felt letter on each page Sometimes I edge it, so this one was B, I edged it in blanket stitch and this was C, so I edged it in chain stitch and put some cable chain in it as well. That one's got feather stitch, I don't know if you can see it, that one's got feather stitch over the surface. This is, um, I think it's called Hedebo stitch or Hedebo stitch that's around the edge there. It's a little bit like blanket stitch but it's raised. You get this little sort of knotted edge so that one lent itself and i haven't filmed my tutorials yet for eye stitches so i don't know what's gonna work i'm just gonna have a quick look through and see if there's anywhere where i haven't really put i haven't got a letter over this side i don't think oh g was there I haven't got anything down at the bottom. You can't see it very well if it's there. Maybe I'll put it there. I haven't got um, E was there. I mean, there's only a certain number of places you can put it. Right, we haven't had one there-ish for a while. So, again, with this, because I don't know exactly how I'm going to finish it yet I'm just going to tack it down and I'm using Silco thread again the reason I position it first is because I don't want a situation like has happened here with A because I added this later I've actually had to cover up some of the stitching that I did because there was nowhere to put it so I covered up the the least exciting stitching with my felt letter 
so I just want to make sure I stitch around this rather than have to put it over the top of stitching that I've already done so a little bit of tacking and that probably because felt so textured and the tacking stitches dent it I will definitely take those out once I know what stitches I'm using so that's it that's my page all set up so now I can work on my stitching and that's how I make my page so when I've done I'll trim back to the edges and the rest of the process if you look on my winging it playlist there's some tutorials about how to make a book I'll put a link at the top of the screen so that you can see how I put my pages together and as I say there'll be a video coming up fairly soon about how I join double pages so I've made double pages and there's a video coming up talking about how I join them at the spine so I hope that you find that helpful look out on Instagram for my finished eye page and the eye stitches and if you want to get those eye stitches easily make sure you follow me over on Instagram as well and you'll be able to see those stitches fairly straightforwardly on my grid as they come out in the next few weeks so happy crafting love to see any books that you make so do share them I'll put a hashtag at the bottom of the screen it's hashtag feather stitch house a to z and you'll be able to see everybody's pieces all together so I hope that's been helpful and I will see you soon. Happy stitching. Bye.